little bit more about big O notation and time complexity. Specifically, you're going to see big O notation with the O, which represents the function that you're looking at, or the algorithm, whatever it is you're evaluating, and N, which represents the number of elements that are in that function. Right now, you do not have to be able to look at any given algorithm and immediately name its big O notation or write its big O notation. But what we are going to do is get a little bit more comfortable with relating a problem that you need to solve with how that could possibly be written in big O notation. Let's go over some simple examples now. O to the 1, O with 1 being N, is an example of a static amount of time that an algorithm would take. So if it was a simple algorithm, it doesn't matter how many entries are in an array, the amount of time that it's going to take to execute that function is going to be the same every time. That's pretty much ideal. It really depends on your problem you're trying to solve, or if that's possible or not, but that's a great and very efficient way to do things. O log n, these might be some words you haven't heard since math class, I know when I started doing this, I hadn't. Um, a divide and conquer type of algorithm, or a binary search, is where, binary specifically, you're going to divide up whatever you're searching through into two pieces and only search one of those halves at a time. That way you can either determine where it is or you can rule out 50% of the entries. ON is where it directly and linearly connects with the entry, N. So the amount of time it would take you to read a book directly correlates with how long that book is. That's not exponential, it's very, very straightforward. Um, next, O, N, log N, that's a merge search. It's a little bit more complex than a binary search, so like searching through a deck of cards in a specific way. You don't have to understand it completely, just know that there are different levels of complexity for big O notation. Now, I drew a bunch of X's in between here because this is where you start to get into the danger zone. This is O n to the power of 2, exponential. Um, so checking a list, cross-checking a list, and what you already have in your grocery cart. You're double-checking two different things. You're looking all the way through your list, and you're looking all the way through your cart. If the entries aren't very big, that's fine. But if you're looking through every cart or the entire store with a list that is you know, the size of the dictionary, that can get really, really long really fast. That is exponential. Anything you're writing that is exponential and in its big O notation is probably not going to be a great solution long term. Like we were talking about scaling before, think about the future of your site. Just because it works for you and maybe one other person, if you have hundreds of thousands of users, that is going to slow everything down to the extent that it's not even usable anymore. That's going to be a really big deal. Now obviously O to infinity, like I'm going to flip a coin until I get ahead. That in the worst case scenario, another thing we need to remember, that could be forever. Um, it probably wouldn't be, um, depending, it could be the first time, but we're looking at worst case scenario here. What I want you to take away from this is using big O notation, you can look at your code and figure out if it's really going to be a good solution for the future of your site as it grows. With more data, more users, Anything that is exponential or below, or depending on the algorithm itself, it really might not be very practical.